Hi, so do you run a business and you need something that can help you collect all the information, information on customers, send you invoices, uh, really do everything that you need to do to run your small business? I know a tool that you can use for absolutely free. Let's get into it. All right, so in this video, I'm going to show you three main options of how you can manage your information as a small business. And I'm going to start with two options that will be more analog, and then I'll get into an, another one, a third one that's more technical, but still all of them are fantastic options and you should totally be using each of them probably. Uh, but let's get into it. The first option is Google Drive. Um, if you are using Google Drive, uh, Google Drive is a good place for you to manage all the information in your business, any files, uh, either docs, so we're talking things like business proposals, concept notes, um, any ad copywriting stuff, documents, uh, any social media campaigns, uh, you can use Google Docs for that. Uh, collecting data on sales and purchases and all that kind of business related mathy information, you can use Google Sheets. Um, you can build whatever automations you want into Google Sheets depending on how good you are at using Google Sheets slash Excel. Uh, and then Google Slides, uh, you know, if you want to make presentations or pitches and things like that. And really the entire breadth of Google Suite, uh, Jamboard, which allows you to do collaborations on a bunch of, with a bunch of people, sort of like this like whiteboard where you can attach sticky notes to different things and different ideas and stuff like that. Um, Google Forms, obviously, for surveys and collecting feedback from your clients. Um, the entire Google Suite, uh, which is accessible via Google Drive, is really just fantastic. And also, because of the folder organization method within Google Drive, like you see the system that I have here, mine is mainly centered around, I have them into four categories, which is working, business, personal, and old stuff. And working is where I put all the documents that I'm working on actively before they go to their final resting place. They sit in working as I work on them in real time. And then business is where I put all the stuff related to my business, that's businesses, all the different hustles, whether that's the Friday Fix newsletter, which you should totally subscribe to, or TLDR Weekly, or um, my data consultancy and things like that. All that stuff goes inside business. Personal is where I put things like career-related stuff, family-related documents, things like that. Old stuff is where everything goes once I'm done using it and it stays there for a while before I delete it when I finally decide that I actually don't need them. Uh, it's a good time to have that because your memory, as you can see mine here in Google Drive, can add up really quickly and eventually you have to pay for it. I actually pay for the annual thing for 100 GB, but so now I, don't, I, I don't want to pay again. So I'm going to have to delete a bunch of stuff to get way below 50%. Uh, which is higher than where I am right now. But yes, so Google Drive is the first option that I highly recommend. Um, any documents can be stored in Google Drive. You just have to drag them forever from wherever they are and drop them into Drive. And then you can work on the different uh, suite products that they have. And if you come to Google Drive and you click New, it will show you all the different options you have available to you. Docs, Sheets, Slides, Forms, more. You have drawings, maps, sites, which can allow you to create a site on Google Drive, Google Col Col Collaboratory, which is a way for you to, to use code um, in a sort of markdown environment. Jamboard is the brainstorming collaborating tool I was talking about. So, so many options. Google Suite is powerful and you're doing yourself a disservice if you're not using it to your maximum, maximum potential. And it's free for the most part. You only have to worry about space. And like I said, most things that you create, you probably won't need forever. So over time, just delete the stuff you don't need. Otherwise, you'll have to pay for it. Well, there's Google Drive is the first option that I highly recommend. The second option that I highly recommend is a super app called Notion, which you may have heard of. Now, I do want to make a video on Notion. I'm just trying to figure out what kind of use case to demo specifically, because Notion is vast and wide and massive and you can do so many really cool things with it. I use Notion to store a bunch of uh, documents um, and a bunch of things, ideas and uh, notes. Uh, this is also where I put my journaling stuff. And so I'm just, what you're looking at here right now is my dashboard in Notion, uh, which also has similar buckets that my Google Drive has, which is work, business and personal. And the, 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 if you're using Notion as, a, as, as an individual, it's free uh, for the most part. You get to pay if you want to collaborate. If you want to get Notion for your team, for your workspace, then you'd have to pay for it. But honestly, if it makes sense for you, then you should absolutely pay for it because Notion is super. There's, there's almost, there almost isn't anything Notion can handle. I mean, tables, you can put data in tables, 
which are similar to spreadsheets for the most part. I mean, you won't be doing complex calculations like Excel, but if it's just for organizing things in spreadsheets, then Notion can absolutely do that. You can create tables. Notion also has an AI which allows you, which can help assist you in idea generation and creating posts for content and writing and things like that. So it is fantastic. Uh, one of the reasons why I've been apprehensive about doing a demo on Notion is because the learning curve is a bit steep. Um, it can be a bit overwhelming trying to figure out how it works. But uh, I would recommend that you take a look at it, uh, watch a video or two on YouTube and see if it's something you're interested in. If you think it is something that will be important, useful to you or your business, then I absolutely think you should take the time to learn how to use it. And just in its basic forms, you don't need to do crazy stuff. But also the beautiful thing about Notion is that there are tons of free templates on the internet and even within Notion for all these different things that make it a lot easier for you to pick it up. So it's only until you have a specific use case that requires you to design the tool specifically to your needs that you could then um, build something from scratch. But for the most part, most of the, the templates do a great job of helping. So I'm just going to give you an example. I'm going to show you, maybe I'll do travel plans. So I click travel plans and I'll show you what a, a table looks like. Uh, for example, this was last year when I took a trip to Senegal. And so I just sort of entered this stuff there and I put uh, a list of places that I wanted to go to and I put the dates and I put status, booked and things like that. And again, you can create drop down options and all that stuff. It is fantastic. Um, you can take a peek at, a, say, a reading list. I haven't updated this in a while. Uh, but so you can see here, this is sort of a table format which shows you a bunch of books that I was trying to read um, at some point in time, uh, things like this. So this is a bunch of stuff that you can actually create in Notion uh, really easily. And all these are templates. I didn't create them from scratch. And so it's a good place, for example, if you're working as a company, it would be a good place to have something like this, to have an employee manual, to have an HR manual, to have any sort of documents for reference in your company or your business, you could have them in some sort of dashboard like this so that everyone can access it at once and just sort of click and go and learn stuff uh, to get onboarded into the company and things like that. But also even as a personal entrepreneur, this would also be really cool for you to use to organize information like that and so on and so forth. So Notion is absolutely something that you can, you can look into and you absolutely should look into if you haven't. I am going to do a specific uh, use case for Notion very soon. Look out for that. I'm still trying to figure out what would be most useful for my primary audience. Um, so we will see uh, what that ends up being. But otherwise, number one, Google Drive. Number two, Notion. All right. So now the third option that I want to show you is called Zoho Books. Now Zoho Books is completely free if you're using it. If you're one user, if you're a solo entrepreneur, if you're a small business owner like most uh, of the people that I know are, then Zoho Books would be really, really valuable for you. And let me show you why. Okay, so if you look at these pricing plans, uh, because we want to start with how much money it will cost you. Okay, so if you look at the pricing plans here and you come all the way here to this nice word free, um, you see here that all the, look at if you see all the benefits that you get from the free account, right? One user, one accountant, really all you need. Managing clients, managing invoices up to 1,000 per annum. I mean, if you're doing more than 1,000 invoices a year, I feel like you can afford to pay for a premium version. That's, that's all I'm saying, right? So, but also I, I believe it has a cap of any businesses that are making over $50,000 per annum, turnover, which is turnover per annum. Again, if you're doing over 50K per annum, then you can probably pay for a premium version. I'm thinking about small business owners here, okay? So again, you're able to have, have a portal for your customers, which is like a sort of a customer relationships management portal which will, will collect all the information on all your customers any any details you want to collect on them name address um size depending on what your brand does and things like that you can automate payment reminders you can change the language in invoicing you can change the currencies in invoicing you can send credit notes recurring invoices expenses and mileage tracking add multiple bank accounts these parts of all, add multiple bank accounts and credit card statements those are not necessarily relevant to Ugandans just because I know, I know how we operate, right? And we don't connect things to our bank accounts in Uganda, also because the technologies don't necessarily allow for that kind of integration. Um, but those you can skip also because you don't necessarily need them. As long as you have an expense tracker and an income tracker, the rest sort of falls in place, okay? So you can, it, it gives you a dashboard to show your accounts and every, your accounts and everything that's going on. Uh, you can get reports. You can, you can even 
add taxes, you just need to tell it the rules and it will implement whatever tax uh, rules you want to implement on your income and your expenses and things like that. Um, you can use, you can integrate it with a bunch of other apps like Zoho apps and it's fantastic. You have, you have email support uh, which allows you to complain to Zoho in case you have any challenges. So again, I was asked to do a video um, on, on, on Zoho Books, a sort of tutorial. And again, um, I was apprehensive because that's a bit too niche. Uh, but uh, what I can recommend is that within uh, Zoho, once you, once, you, once you sign up and you get into, if you log in, you are able to see, and just give me one second as it loads up. I logged out of, 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 of my Zoho, so now I'm just, because I created an account just sort of to demo this, but if we go to YouTube, and we type Zoho Books Tutorial, you're able to see that Zoho Books has an account on YouTube and there's plenty of resources on using Zoho Books. That's from zero all the way to 100. So, but also, once you sign up for Zoho Books uh, for free, it will take you through this process where you sort of familiarize yourself with the platform. And in the process, it has tutorial videos in the platform that teach you how to use it. So it is fantastic, it is easy, it is completely free, and honestly, I don't know why you're not using it yet if you have a, business, a small business and you're running one like that. So you should definitely check out Zoho Books. Now, Zoho Books would be very good for the more business-related side um, of your small business, which is all the invoices and all that stuff and clients and customers and managing their information and emailing them and all that kind of stuff. So that's it. Those three options for you, Google Drive and Notion, which are good for file management and resource management within um, their different platforms, and then Zoho Books, which is very good for customer relationship management and invoices and things like that. Uh, those three, using those three will allow you to do everything that you need to do to run your business successfully. I made a bunch of videos on digital tools for entrepreneurs, which I will leave at the end of this video right here. Otherwise, um, I will see you in the next video. Peace.